Nation, welcome back to another episode of Random Musings from the Clinical Trials Guru. I believe this is episode 68, I want to say. Uh, let me check right now just to make sure. Uh, <clears throat> no, sorry, 67. So it's been a week. We haven't done one of these in a week. feel like it's been forever, but it's been a really busy week. So finally got a chance to do episode 67 uh, today on this Friday, August 11th. I mean, it's been an incredibly busy week if you've been following my YouTube channel. If you're listening on the podcast, go to youtube.com slash You'll see half of the busy week documented in a vlog uh, that I did. So what did we do? Let's give a summary before we get into some news for this week. So Monday, I had my first interim monitoring visit as a CRA. Um, <clears throat> went better than expected. Um, well, it went better than expected and worse than expected. So let me explain. As far as my actual workload on site, meaning things to source data verify, there wasn't that many because the site was not entering data uh, in a timely manner. So that was an issue. However, um, my report, the site had a lot of pro, uh, had a few protocol deviations and there were about 21 outstanding action items, albeit most of the action items were small, minor things. Um, so that was a lot. That was a lot of documenting. And I literally just minutes before I started this podcast today, um, finalized my first IMV report. So that took a couple of revisions because there was understandably, um, so many action items. So there were a lot of revisions. I think we had three or four rounds. I have a pretty good, um, team over with uh, the CRO I'm with and a uh, good line manager, good project manager. Again, these project managers, I don't know how they do it. They are so underpaid. And um, uh, so what did I learn after this interim monitoring visit? Because I've done, as a CRA, I've done a bunch of site selection visits, site initiation visits. I've never done an interim monitoring visit. So <clears throat> um, not my favorite thing to do, to be honest with you. Uh, but it's necessary for me to do because I need to learn and I need to appreciate and I need to really taste what it feels like to be a CRA because this leads us to another activity that you'll see in the vlog of this week, uh, building my CRO. So we've, we're starting to have projects coming in through the pipeline. We wrote our first protocol. We actually just finished the synopsis. We didn't start the protocol yet. We wrote our first protocol synopsis uh, for our first client. We have another client on hold, hopefully starting soon. Uh, I think we're going to be writing a protocol there as well. We've got a third potential project uh, way down the line, but you probably saw me meeting with some people at Bio in my vlog for the... Uh, bio 2017 in San Diego so we did a full vlog for that so go to YouTube again and check it out um, and then this last one it came out of nowhere but it's uh, probably the project that's gonna start first um, we, we don't have to write a protocol here we just submitted a bid I just did my first bid defense uh, so there's a lot to talk about I didn't even get into the bid defense on my vlog I don't think, because we didn't really do anything pertaining to... No, no, we did do our first bid defense was on Thursday. And I did document some of that, but that's footage for a future blog vlog. So, uh, okay, the IMV, it's a necessary evil for me. I'm, I do not enjoy monitoring. I do not enjoy writing reports. I do enjoy interacting with sites. I do enjoy... Um, comparing different sites it helps me all this gives me feedback all of this gives me more data for my own sites that I've been building since 2005 um, so it, it, it's good to immerse yourself in these things not everything you do I, I think this is an important point for everyone listening watching <clears throat> not everything you do um, 
like you don't need to be passionate about everything you're, you're doing okay you do need to be passionate about the end result in my case the end result is to have the full infrastructure for the entire clinical trial process so I want the sites we already have plenty of those we're opening more we're 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 uh, establishing new consulting relationships every day almost um, then I want the CRO which we're starting to do now and with the CRO comes a really solid CRA training program and then a retention program so that's where the CRA Academy comes in and then as far as the retention it took it, it it's gonna take for me to do something that I don't like doing which is actually getting out there and becoming a monitor to help improve retention for my CRO because right now myself and Chris and just a handful of other people are actually doing the monitoring for our CRO uh, because it's August 2017 the goal is by this time next year so by August 2018 let's say we have anywhere from four to eight projects for the CRO going on full time there's no way I'm gonna be able to do all of that as the CRA slash project manager and and with Chris e even if we have like a handful of people I think we're gonna need at least 10 to 12 maybe even 15 people to help us out with all those projects so there's no way I can train someone how to be a CRA if I don't actually know what it takes to be a CRA and and not just know what it takes from an academic perspective because I already know that but actually doing a report actually understanding what it's like to get an IMV report sent back to you with revisions knowing about deadlines knowing about sponsor requests then understanding site requests and site issues like I understand both of those aspects and it helps me with the sites helps me with my CRO and then ultimately my end goal is to get involved with a uh, several sponsor biotechs probably um, startups in many cases and see what we can do there see if we can cause some some real damage in a good way so all of this leads towards that and yeah most of the things I do enjoy doing I love helping clients start their sites I love uh, getting students interested in learning about what cl what the clinical research industry is and everyone who comes into my CRA Academy wants to be a CRA and by the end of the three months they learn that yes yeah, CRA is great but my best bet of I, I need to get my foot in the door first with any position I could find whether that's clinical research coordinator trial master file specialist regulatory affairs clinical trials assistant we've helped many students get to those positions and some actually get into CRA positions um, and so I enjoy doing those kind of things I enjoy business development I enjoy sales marketing so I do enjoy most of the things I'm doing but at, when it comes to monitoring it's not for me but I do it because it adds to the foundation for what we're trying to build so that's just a little uh, insight into my thought process and uh, I mean we're trying to do something pretty big here and pretty uh, pretty special I mean when it comes to transforming the industry uh, from a marketing perspective I mean all the stuff I'm doing with clinical trials guru now with the clinical scoop.com we've got our first piece of content for our Alzheimer's vertical uh, which I can get into in a little bit um, in fact I'll get into that now you'll probably see that in next week's vlog we have uh, our videographer the one who occasionally films some of our footage I'm, I'm still filming most of, of the videos myself but we have a videographer that comes in and helps out from time to time and so now she's been hired by us to uh, film a long form piece of content so a video that can then be converted to audio just like this one this one you can watch on YouTube or on iTunes uh, but it's all about Alzheimer's that's our first vertical that we chose because there's a huge demand for Alzheimer's study participants right now there are so many Alzheimer's studies uh, th and there's just not enough patients and we it's important because progress has not really been made in this Alzheimer's space since I started in this industry back in 05 they're still on the beta amyloid 
hypothesis back then. They, nothing new has come out. The only things that have that they're starting to test are um, slowing down the progression of the disease, but there's nothing um, in terms of better treatment. And these are all mild to moderate. They haven't even gotten into the moderate to severe yet. So we're a ways away from having significant improvements in Alzheimer's. And I think whatever little we can do to help as far as, and for our purposes, I mean, we're running a business. We want to get more Alzheimer's participants, not just to our sites, but to our client sites. And then if we can sort of become like a patient recruitment company as a side project and have finally our videographer spearhead that project and I'll be overseeing it and I'll be developing some content for that as well. So that should be interesting and I'll upload a, a few of these videos on YouTube and I'll feature a few of the more interesting ones on the podcast, the random musings from the Clinical Trials Guru, probably spliced up with a little intro and outro for me as to the rationale behind why we created that piece of content. So right now we're targeting patients and their families and also physicians who want to learn more about Alzheimer's. And we are interviewing medical liaisons, we are interviewing doctors, we're interviewing caregivers, we're going to try to interview patients themselves. So that should be interesting. Go to the clinical scoop and you should see uh, a new tab. I believe we're going to call it Alzheimer's TV. And it's going to be on Clinical Scoop, which is a news website, which I'm going to get into in a little bit as we go through the news. <clears throat> but the, the reasoning behind this is we've always wanted to make like a CNN style um, long form content because people are hungry for information like they're not getting enough. They're not getting enough info on Alzheimer's. They're not getting enough info on clinical research. We want to do a vertical for every single um, medical condition of interest to clinical research. And obviously, we respond to what the market is giving us. So we're seeing a lot of Alzheimer's stuff. We're seeing a lot of OBGYN stuff right now. Uh, and for us, it happens to be very easy to get other psychiatric disorders um, uh, hi, um, highlighted and talked about more on the on the clinical scoop so that's going to be real interesting so stay tuned for that as well and uh, yeah that's sort of like the end game for what we're trying to do everything is another layer or another brick on the foundation and we're just building on top of it and not every project we do is going to be successful um, but we have to try I mean we won't know unless we try and it's always good to have multiple streams of income. We have no no idea how we're going to monetize the clinical scoop. That's not a concern for us right now. We have plenty of other streams of income to pay the bills. Um, but we're always investing, always looking, always experimenting. And I think you guys should do as well, everyone watching or listening. Figure out what your role is or what you want your role to be in this industry, or any industry for that matter. Like, what are you trying to get out of it? and then try to reverse engineer a way to do that. Um, and there's just so much opportunity here, and uh, it costs nothing. I mean, it costs me nothing except some time to do this video, to do this podcast. It costs us a little bit to get the clinical scoop built out with a professional videographer. I mean, Fina has been an actual news reporter, a medical news reporter, uh, and she's a videographer as well, so we're paying her for her time and for, for helping us out with this project. But you don't have to. Like, let's say you don't have a budget for that. You can do it yourself. You can have an intern help out. You can have someone in the family. I'm sure you have a son, daughter, nephew, niece, granddaughter, grandson that's pretty good with cameras and pretty good with technology, and they can help you out. So always look for ways to uh, experiment. And then give it some time. Be patient. So things are not going to happen overnight. The Clinical Scoop, we started it as a written blog back in February or March of this year. And it hasn't been until recently that it started resonating. And it was just consistently putting out one article after another. Now we have a writer that we pay to help out with the posts. I then put them on LinkedIn. I get inbound leads. 
leads to other business opportunities sometimes. Sometimes it just leads to conversation. Most of the time just leads to random conversations. But that's good because I'm always learning. We're always figuring out new things to do. And um, so that's sort of uh, just wanted to give you a little insight into what we've been up to. Uh, Tuesday. So Tuesday I went to my clinic in San Bernardino. Uh, we did four rate we had five visits that day so i wanted to do a full podcast episode on what it takes to be a research site owner we just had a potential client meet with us yesterday which was thursday uh and he is an unlicensed physician he graduated from the united states uh, but he did not get his license and he rightfully so is interested in opening a research site and um, his wife is a physician so he's got a PI and he himself is a PI so he could be a great study coordinator um, and he'll understand all the clinical nuances and and minutia of uh, let's say for example a lab result or ECG result even though he's not licensed to do a physical or give his his opinion or his assessment on an adverse event he can have educated conversations with the PI and the other sub eyes and so I told him you have all the ingredients you need to start a site now the question is how much risk do you want to take because you can go two ways with this you can start your own site pay the rent yourself sign a three-year lease with you as the personal guarantor because your company has no history, so the landlords, any landlord's going to want you to personally guarantee it. So you're taking a risk because three years, you don't know where your business is going to be in three years. Ninety percent of businesses fail in the first one year, so you're taking a huge risk there. But if you're confident that you can do it, and with our help, we'll, we can certainly pour some gasoline on the fire, help you get some studies quicker, uh, help you negotiate your budget smarter point you in the right directions, help you build out your infrastructure and your operations, or you can still do that with us, and you can partner with a PI with an office, and then you can get patients, because what did we just talk about with the Alzheimer's? The lack of study participants. Patients, if you partner with a physician who has a private practice, you have guaranteed patients. Now, you got to find the studies for those indications, but at least you know that you have a source, a consistent, steady source of patients coming into your site. And that is the best way for patient recruitment. There is no better way. There is not even, there's not even a close second to having patients recruiting from your own physician's private practice database, your own PI's database. That leads us, and I'll do a full, long half an hour podcast on what it takes to be a site owner probably later today and I might put that one up on YouTube also uh, so stay tuned for that make sure you subscribe make sure you like make sure you tell a friend um, so that leads us into Wednesday so Wednesday what I did was we had a site selection visit at one of my other clinics Irv in Irvine California uh, global clinical trials it was a really good uh, inpatient study okay and same thing I was telling the potential client yesterday, and I'll, I'll actually tie this into the future podcast I do later today as far as what it takes and what, what you should expect owning and operating your own research clinic. But these big budget studies, and by big budget I mean seven figure studies, okay, so million dollar budgets. Most studies, the average study is six figure study, 100,000, 150,000, maybe 200,000. The big budget studies are seven-figure studies. They don't have to be phase one, okay? But they usually have some inpatient component to them, right? Or they just have a lot of visits and a lot of data that needs to be collected. We have two studies like this starting up at Global Clinical Trials this year. Uh, one in, actually both in October. So things are gonna get super busy here at Global Clinical Trials. Uh, but my point of all this is the outpatient studies, the six-figure budget studies, they keep the lights on, okay? They pay the bills. The seven-figure studies, they produce wealth, 
right? And they they help you uh, create your own wealth, and they give you the opportunity to diversify into other industries or to expand your business uh, or to invest in real estate or whatever you want to do. You want to buy a car? Go buy a car. I'm not really into that kind of stuff. I'm more into buying real estate and it, as far as investments are concerned, but I know site owners that uh, get these seven-figure studies often, and they they just go crazy with all the stuff they buy. So whatever it is you want to do, I don't care. I don't judge. I'm just telling you, be ready for those opportunities because they do come. But be patient because these studies, these seven-figure studies, unless you're one of the preferred sites, which is only a handful of these sites across the country, they come in cycles, and they come every three to five years. Okay. For us, our last seven-figure study, which was a really good one, we actually had two, so they come in waves, Okay, were in 2013 and 2014. So now it's 2017. So it's three to four years. Okay, Every three to four years, they come, and they come in waves, and they come in multiple. They come two, three of these studies at a time. Your goal is to remain in business long enough to catch these cycles. So get enough of these outpatient studies, pay your bills, save some. There's going to be rainy days, there's going to be downturns, there's going to be studies that you're not able to recruit patients for. Survive for these seven-figure budgets, okay, and then repeat and repeat and stay in business and keep building, keep expanding, be smart with your money when you get it, and be smart with your money when times are tough as well, okay? Just be smart in general okay so don't expect that let's say you luck out and your first study is a seven figure budget study well don't go crazy because not all the these are exceptions not the rule the rule the norm is the six figure budget study so you gotta be consistent with those and uh, don't take it for granted that you have those six figure budget studies because sometimes you won't get those either and then you don't have a business so you got to do well on those six-figure budget studies too because guess what those same sponsors those same CROs are the ones that are going to be awarding you the seven-figure dollar budget studies okay for the most part I mean there's only a handful of CROs out there that really matter like the consolidation in this industry has has gotten crazy you you can go on the clinical scoop and read about it INC and Inventive merge today um, let me pull it up. LabCorp acquired Chiltern, INC and Inventive, like I told you before. Um, where where was another one? Worldwide Clinical Trials and Metadata. Uh, that wasn't a merger. Um, Quintal's IMS. Okay, Par Excel's going private. There's a lot of consolidation right now. Uh, here's another one from today. Okay. Uh, where was it? I'm on Fierce Biotech right now. Fierce CRO. I think it's on Fierce CRO. I just read one today. I had our writer. She's going to do a write-up on this. Charles River Lab doubles down on CNS research, which is central nervous system research, with Brains Online by. So another CRO got acquired. Um, CNS is going to be big. Okay, and lu I'm lucky because that's that's the first therapeutic indication that I got thrown into. And it's been our bread and butter ever since. I mean, now with clients, we get them all kinds of studies, but CNS is really good. And we're, we're now, as far as CNS, we were in a drought. Okay, for the last three years, we were in a drought. Then 2013 was uh, a wave. We had two big budget studies. However, from 2009 till 2012, we were in another mini drought in CNS. So cycles, but we survived. We Sometimes we pivoted, so we we spun off sites, we sold sites, but we we all we me and and my team always uh, kept our foot in the door when it came to CNS research. Yeah, we may have sold off a site, we may have opened another one, but we're still doing the same things pretty much. So be consistent, do well on these six-figure budget studies. Don't take them for granted. If you need help. Uh, getting started. These are the studies we're going to go after. My consulting company can help you. We help sites all the time. We charge a flat fee of $1,000 a month, and it's month to month. There's no contract. Um, you pay us. We get you studies. We help you with your source docs. We do your SOPs, all kind of stuff. There's no 
catch here. We're not trying to get one over on you or screw anyone over. What we're really trying to do, like I just discussed, is build an infrastructure. And I understand that for me to have everything I want, as far as having a site network, having a CRO, having a, a sponsor or several sponsor, and having equity um, in these companies, I need clients. So I can't possibly own all these sites. I need clients. And by clients, I need people like you wanting to start your own site and you paying me a monthly fee, $1,000, to help you build up your site so that when I get a study from a sponsor, either for my CRO or from the sponsor I'm working with at that time, I know that I can count on you because I helped you get to where you are and uh, we're going to continue to help you. So that's it's all it all fits into the uh, master plan. And yeah, we'll change. We make changes all the time. I mean, the clinical scoop may not work out, but that's okay. I think it will, but it may not work out. And so what? I mean, at least we know it didn't work out. So that was uh, Wednesday. We had a site selection visit, so I'm keeping my fingers crossed. But it looks like we'll be getting it. And um, Thursday, we met with a potential client. We did a bid defense. So my CRO, I was involved in my first bid defense. So two weeks ago, I was involved in my first um, response to an RFP, a request for proposal, uh, which is a bid. Okay. And you're bidding, you're competing with other CROs. They obviously don't tell you who they are but you're competing with three or four. Looks like now I'm competing with one other. And uh, I just did a bid defense, so it looks like they're looking at uh, prices and uh, for a couple vendors. But hopefully we get it, Hope and if we don't, it's okay. We still have got other sticks in the fire, and we're just gonna continue doing what we're doing. But I know we can do a really good job because I'm gonna be hands-on, all hands on deck for this project. Me and Chris and the few people that we brought into our infrastructure to help us out for the CRO, we're going to take care of this study. And we're going to give our client, the sponsor, I believe, the best service that they can get. Okay, Because they're going to get the actual owners helping out and doing it. And I understand all the issues from the site level. I now understand a solid number of issues from the CRA, CRO, sponsor level, and that's just increasing every day, literally every day. And so that's the goal. That's the plan. So uh, that is it for today. Um, go to the clinical scoop to learn about all the CRO consolidations. We're actually going to be uh, doing a couple more because these things are dynamic. I mean, it seems like someone's getting acquired, a CRO is getting acquired every day now in this industry and a big one is getting acquired or merged like once a month and so stay tuned for that stay tuned for the alzheimer's tv coming out on the clinical scoop and stay tuned for my next video slash podcast on what it takes to own and operate a research site where i'm going to go more in depth on this topic of uh six figure budgets and seven figure budgets and then there's even some five figure budgets but those are not that exciting, but they're great for building up your PI's uh, CV and experience. So thank you, everyone, for listening, watching, and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Dan at theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Take care.